At Melbourne Zoo, they're trialling a new way to keep these guys amused. And I've come to investigate. Apparently, they're giving computer games to orangutans. Gotta say this. These apes are our close relatives. Orangutans share 97% of our DNA, which is um, obviously a lot. And we see a lot of shared traits between orangutans and humans as well. Indeed, Ben G, who's been looking after the orangs for 25 years, thinks they're remarkably human-like. Look, in my opinion, I've worked with all the species of great ape, um, humans included. <laughs> they're, uh, they're easily the most uh, intelligent of the great ape species. I think it's how they, they, uh, they approach life. They've got a very good sense of future. That means that they can project themselves into what's happening tomorrow. And what does that help them do? It helps them to plan. So put together a string of actions to get an outcome. So, like for all intelligent creatures, it's important to keep the orangs mentally engaged. They've actually tried them on tablet computers. But the screen has to be kept on this side of the cage. You definitely can't give an orangutan an iPad. Uh, they're nine times stronger than we are and they're gonna be pretty interested in what's inside. So the zoo and Melbourne University have collaborated to come up with eight friendly computer games. This is version 1.0. This is a 3D camera from a popular computer game console. Basically, it detects the position of my body in space. Here's the projector, and that's projecting an image from the computer screen down onto the floor. Down here, we have the game. It's pretty simple. All you do is you see one of these circles and give it a whack, and then it explodes. Oh, a lot of fun, really. It may amuse a TV reporter, but will it engage an orangutan? The researchers set up the hardware on the outside of the enclosure, safely away from ape curiosity. All that's inside is the projected image. The orangs liked the game, but there was a surprise. They used the technology in an unexpected way. So we'll sometimes see them look at the uh, colours as they're projected on their hand or even go right up close to the projector to, to look at it on their face. They'd effectively invented their own game, one the humans hadn't thought of. Hmm. Reporter see, reporter do. It is actually quite enjoyable. I think that's really interesting. We think of a projection as a 2D flat surface, but it's really a cone of light. And to the orangutan, interacting up close to the projection or down on the floor, both are just as legitimate. An advantage of using software to enrich the orang's environment is the games can be changed quickly and easily when the animals get bored. Compare that to traditional physical enrichment. Here, food's hidden, and the orangs have to work out how to get it. They're smart enough to make tools to extract it, but physical enrichment like this takes a long time to bring into practice. It goes through an approval process first, and then a number of testing sessions to make sure that they don't do anything silly with it, they don't ingest it, they don't get their fingers stuck in it, all those type of things. Computer games, on the other hand, can be changed at will and without testing. But is it really a good idea to be giving technology to animals? Shouldn't we aim for more natural enrichment? Well, the researchers say it's not the means that are important, it's the end. The natural behaviour we're focusing on with digital technology is problem solving and using their brains. And so the means we use to achieve that is artificial because it's technology and they obviously don't have exposure to that in the wild. But it's also a really neat way that we can provide that opportunity for them where we don't have a rainforest with 600 different species of fruit for them to choose from. The mental engagement of finding fruit in the wild might at least be partially met 
by mentally engaging with a computer game. But if orangutans are so intelligent, instead of cages, maybe we should just leave them in the rainforest. And this is a big question that we're always asking ourselves. But for the orangutans we look after here, they've got incredibly good conditions. And the orangutan's natural environment is not crash hot. It's being destroyed at a rapid rate by fire, land clearing and the illegal pet trade. Already there are thousands of wild orangs in refuges that can't be returned to the wild. If I was an orangutan, I'd prefer to be in a good zoo than in the wild right now when we see what's happening. Our collective concern for the plight of the orangs might increase if zoo visitors could form closer bonds with these animals. That's the theory behind this next game. This is Kiani. She's 38, an older lady, and she's about to play a game with Ben. The idea is the same coloured shapes are projected onto both sides of the enclosure. When Ben touches one, Kiani does the same, and there's a lightning bolt reward. Oh, what a good girl, Kiani. The plan is for anyone to be able to play a game with an orang and so develop a deeper bond with the animal. Even me. I'm on the triangle. Hmm, I've been given the orang cold shoulder. Are you going to sleep now? I can't even get baby daywing interested. Maybe I can mess with their heads. I win! The humans have won! No luck. I was interested in me. Apparently, there are some people they like to play with and others not. Just not her type, I guess. Kiani, well, she really likes men with big, great, big red beards. Finally, Kiani throws beardless Graham a bone. Hey, there we go. It's quite amazing, really. You feel this real connection that, you know, I'm pushing something, she's pushing something. Hey, we did it. High five. Worth a try. High five. I get one. <laughs> one of the challenges is we don't know what kind of games orangutans like to play. So it's trial and error. We're using the this is a new game phone. currently under development. So how does this technology work? OK, so what we're doing is we're tracking the object based on its colour and shape. Once again, it's the 3D camera that does the tracking. So when we're far away from the sensor and waving it, we can make noises. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when we're closer, we can make different noises. Right, OK. So you can kind of compose music by moving this balloon around. Yeah. So have a go. It's perfectly like suited to an orangutan's physical abilities. It just involves walking and moving an arm. Oh, yeah, this is great. Surely they'll love this game. Well, all the humans we've given it to so far have enjoyed it. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. We're really trying to not make assumptions about the ways that they might want to use technology. We're really trying to learn from what they do. Can't wait to see what future games these guys will be teaching us.